Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. So continuing our series on testing prospective materials for improvised body armor, we'd recently done a test on tire tread. Uh, and it proved to be actually one of the more successful materials that we've tested. Uh, of course, we've also done tests on sheet metal, and it's also proven reasonably effective, at least at stopping handgun rounds, and perhaps more so when interspersed with layers of other material. So I thought the natural next test to do would be alternating layers of tire tread and sheet steel. So I've got three layers of tire tread, two layers of steel, and we'll shoot it and see what happens. As usual, I'm going to start by shooting it with a 9mm automatic handgun, representing sort of the lower half of the handgun power spectrum. So, examining our target, we have our two entrance holes, of course, and we actually do have one exit hole. Uh, I believe that was the second shot that I fired that came out there. Uh, the other one was stopped, and it looks like it's in the second sheet of steel. Um, before I try to dig it out, why don't we try shooting this with the 44 Magnum, representing the upper half of the handgun power spectrum. And we'll see what that does. Okay, so examining our target, we can see where the 9mm bullets both punched holes in the second sheet of steel, although one of them was trapped in the second layer of rubber, while the other one went on through the entire stack. Looks like we also have a fragment of either lead or steel, a couple of them there. And this is stuck to the steel, or to the lead, as the case may be. So it looks like both of the 44 Magnum bullets were captured in the second layer of rubber, as far as I can tell. There is an exit hole there, but there was no exit hole in the steel. See, all right, here's... Here's one bullet that was lodged just under the first layer of rubber, but it, it looks like it went through the first layer, punched a big hole in the layer of sheet steel, and actually forced the steel through the second layer of rubber, but then the bullet itself remained uh, you know, back underneath the first layer of steel. So that's, that's interesting. Anyway, bottom line is that both of the 44 bullets were captured uh, by the second layer of rubber. And that's not terribly surprising because even though the 44 is a bit more powerful than the 9mm, I am using hollow point bullets which sometimes expand more and provide less penetration on certain media. At this point, our sheet metal is sufficiently deformed that I don't think I can really put the stack back together uh, in order to shoot it with the 223, at least not with the layers uh, in contact with each other. You know, the, the holes that we already have in the sheet steel are going to prevent the layers from stacking in close contact, uh, and that's potentially going to change the result. So I suspect that a 223 would probably go through this stack uh, based on what we've seen so far. This is not ineffective, but it's not really any more effective than the rubber by itself. 
Uh, and so I would not expect this thickness of rubber to stop the 223 where it took uh, a little more than this thickness to stop it in our previous test. So, interestingly enough, while tire rubber itself does seem to be an effective medium for stopping bullets if you get enough thickness of it, the addition of alternating layers of sheet metal between the layers of rubber doesn't seem to enhance its bullet stopping capabilities all that much. And then, as the steel starts to deform, it causes the layers to kind of splay out, which is awkward and unsightly, and potentially compromising to the integrity of the armor. So, yet another interesting test, and yet another uh, material I probably wouldn't make body armor out of. Anyway, until next time, thank you for watching The Idaho Show.